IRFFB in 2022. If you're using iRacing, you need this. It's a game changer, trust me. Here I'll show you how to install, set up and configure IRFFB alongside discussing some of the issues you may experience with it and how to quickly troubleshoot them if so. Let's jump straight in. IRFFB is a software that sits between you and the iRacing sim, taking the default 60Hz iRacing force feedback and delivering it at 360Hz, with the result being a significantly smoother, more detailed force feedback. This allows you to be more accurate with your inputs and react sooner to what the car is doing whilst racing. Personally, I have found the addition of IRFFB to not only enhance the iRacing driving experience as a whole, but has also allowed me to significantly improve the overall quality, consistency and speed of my driving. One drawback, however, is that IRFFB will add a latency of 29 milliseconds. However, we will be adding a second free software alongside of it called VJoy to mitigate this. The link for VJoy is down in the description below. Once here, click on vjoysetup.exe. Once this is downloaded, open the file. Then we want to go through the normal setup and installation process. You'll soon get a notification that VJoy is installed successfully. Click on OK. Once that's done, we want to search for VJoy down bottom left in your search bar. Once you've found and opened it, you'll see a window much like this. You don't need to change anything here, but personally I go through and untick any of the axes that we're not going to be using. Since we're sim racing, all we're going to be using is the X axes left and right. And then for force feedback, make sure that all of these effects are enabled. Once that's done, click apply, and then you can exit out of VJoy. You no longer have to worry about this. Next, we need to download IRFFB. Like VJoy, link is in the description. Once here, click on IRFFB.exe. Before opening the file, it's probably best to drag it into a location where you want to be able to access it. For me, I personally add it to my desktop for easy access. To note, IRFFB does not have an installer. So when you download it and add it to a place of your preference, if you double click on it and you don't see anything happening, don't panic, it is working, but you need to be able to access it a little bit differently in this case. So when you double click and you don't see a window, navigate down to the bottom right hand side of your desktop and you should see a little arrow up or a chevron. Click on this and the IRFFB icon should be showing here. Click on this and you should be able to access the window through there. Alternatively, I find that if iRacing is running simultaneously, you're usually able to access the window also. First things first, we want to select our force feedback device, which in my case is going to be the belt driven V2.5 Club Sport wheelbase from Fanatec. For our force feedback type, because we downloaded VJoy and we want that minimized latency, we want to select 60 Hz direct filtered 360. That's the option we need to check here. On a quick note, to check that VJoy is installed and working properly, you'll see a data log down here. You can see that we have VJoy device one acquired down here, so we know it's working okay. Going through these settings, use 360 Hz telemetry for suspension effects. We want to have this ticked. Also car specific settings we want to have ticked, reduce force when parked ticked, run on startup, start minimized, completely personal to you. But for me, I personally have them ticked. So minimum force for me again, personally, I have to zero. Max force, I have a 38. Just be careful with this because more is less and less is more. So it actually works backwards to how you might think it is. So the higher the number, the less force, the lower the number, the more force. Damping, I have set to five. And then suspension bumps, 35, understeer 30. Understeer offset, it's basically the amount of time from when the car starts to understeer to when you feel it. I have zero. SOP is seat of your pants effect. It's going to be more oversteer. I have set to 30 also. And SOP offset, I have set to zero. These are personally my preferences when it comes to IRFFB and my use of it. But again, it's all going to be depending on your wheelbase, your driving style, and what you specifically prefer. But next steps, we're going to jump into iRacing and I'm going to show you how to use it alongside to try get the best out of it. But these settings, I will link in a pinned comment down beneath this video. So you can go there and see the settings for yourself if you so prefer. Once you've opened up iRacing, there is one more thing we need to do. If we press and hold escape and we go to options, we need to calibrate the wheel. So once here, click on your steering and then we need to turn it until it reaches the end of the bump stop 
and then all of the way the opposite direction also so the number you should see here is around sixty-five thousand. bring it back to the middle and just do the normal setup click done turn left 90 degrees click done and then our steering is also calibrated past this we need to get out on track probably a good thing to do at this point is to have your irffb open in a separate window go do a few laps out on track understand how the car is behaving a little bit differently than the standard iRacing force feedback that's super important i think first is to understand the difference between both before we go about setting different values in the suspension bumps and understeer off steer effects also so personally i would recommend getting out onto a bumpier track something like long beach or also sebring but if installed correctly, you should immediately feel a difference. Especially when it comes to understeer and oversteer, you should begin to feel the back end of the car step out a lot sooner and a lot more naturally than you would with this 60 hertz eye racing force feedback that you get as default. This naturally comes with the ability to be able to catch slides sooner and generally just be more efficient and direct with your driving and steering inputs. And as I said previously, this will lead to faster lap times and generally just being a cleaner, more efficient, competent and consistent driver on track. So onto some issues I've found since installing and utilizing IRFFB. As I mentioned earlier, if you click on IRFFB and there is no window showing, be sure to navigate down to the bottom right hand side of the screen, click the show hidden icons arrow, and you can access IRFFB from here. In the event that you need to uninstall IRFFB, I've seen this on many forums and it's an issue that I came across and it took me quite a while to troubleshoot on my own. So if we go to delete IRFFB, and we get this error, this action can't be completed because the file is open in IRFFB. To uninstall it, we need to ensure it's not running. To do this, we'll go to Task Manager. So search in the search bar in the bottom left hand corner, open up Task Manager, and then you should be able to see the IRFFB 32-bit here open within your Task Manager. If you right click, End Task, from there, you should be able to freely remove the software from your computer. In the event that you're using other simulators such as ACC and when you open it up you realize that you've no force feedback on the wheel. Again what you need to do is ensure that IRFFB is not running in the background. Again you're going to close down the application, you're going to go to task manager, right click on IRFFB and end task. It's also to be noted that IRFFB can run without VJOY. VJOY is not necessary here. However, I do prefer to run it and that's why I'm showing you this way. However, if you do want to run it without VJOY, that's absolutely fine. Just be sure to select the 360 hertz option here and you can run it fine without. I will link in the description also a link to the iRacing members forum where they go into details about the differences between using and not using VJOY. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope everything was explained clearly and you're now on your way to an overall better iRacing driving experience. If you've watched until the end, be sure to hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more. Until next time, happy racing.